says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves me? Let me welcome back to the show. Michael Harriet is here. He is the author of Black AF History, which comes out in September. He's also the um, proprietor of Drapedomania. It is a podcast that we're going to be having a listening event tonight in Nubia Q and a to follow. Uh, thanks for sticking around. You had some uh, thoughts and prayers of the last conversation we, we were having before we went to break, but before we get to that, Michael, let's, let's some people have been holding on. So I want to get, um, get them into the number here is 866-801-8255. Let's, let's go to Stacy in your neck of the woods, South Carolina, Stacy in South Carolina. Welcome. Hey, Miss Hunter, how you doing? And family. Hey. The Nubia family. What's good? <laughs> hey, listen, I just wanted to touch base, just touch in, and uh, just touch in on the subject we were talking about, you know, all the stuff that we, I was just saying about black people in general, we are the most creative human beings on this earth. We create the pyramids. I mean, you got the Mexicans, they did their Aztec thing, they got pyramids. You got the Chinese that built the Great Wall. I mean, and then you look at white people, you're like, man, what did they build? Nothing but the gun to steal from the people who would build. I mean, say, say what you want. We speak in English right now. So I'm not That's I'm not it. going I'm not going to discount. Say what you want. Um the last fifty or forty something presidents of, of the world, the global leaders of the world, have been unmelanated people. Say what you want. You, my ancestors got dragged over uh into uh, the holds of ships and had to work for two, three, four hundred years uh, behind a whip. Say what you want. Uh, that's pretty damn creative. Total world domination. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to discount that as a as a superpower. I'm not. I'm not going to discount that. Would you discount that, Michael Harry? <laughs> Would you? Because oh. I. Oh no. You know, I think. I think there is something about uh, the pan European ethic of uh, of the ability to to take scarcity and turn it into their advantage. I think, um, you know, a lot of what we see with what we call white people is like the barbarism that comes from uh, scarcity in societies that's built on scarcity, right? Like when your land doesn't grow food, then you have to survive and your culture has to survive by conquering other people, right? Um, and so in other places we see, you know, we see wars all over the country. I mean, all over the world. Right. But the history of warfare and the adapt adaptation and the progression of it, taking Chinese fireworks and making it into guns, taking, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity and making it to a bomb. Right. It, it is what is they see necessary to conquer because of that culture of scarcity and what it makes them into right but the them you know waxes and wanes so so my thing here on these airwaves is to get people dis you know to get them to unplug from the them do you know what i'm saying because as long as you are plugged into the them which is the conversation we were having before then you you have um uh, you have a responsibility to keep it going all of all of the you know the violence and then you have a responsibility because you're part of the them and what I'm saying to everybody, if you're Italian, you weren't always part of the them. If you're right. Irish, you weren't always part of the them. If you're Asian, you were never part of the them. If you're Jewish, depending on where you come from, and probably not, you were never part of the them unless they could use you to, you know, further certain things and, and incorporate you into the scheme, right? But the them is always going to be the folk at the top of the food chain. And some of those folk now have brown and black skin. So even that is is part of a system designed for power more than it is. And, and, and to the scarcity part, I, I often think about, you know, we charge money for fruit and vegetables that grow out of the ground freely. That if we just all just grew fruits and vegetables, we would just be able to eat and not have to go to the supermarket and pay 99 cents for a banana or whatever, I just paid $1.29 a pound for some apples, you know, I could just grow them and pick them and eat them and freeze them and have food. But the fact that we can't even freely do that, marijuana coming to mind, <laughs> is also part of the genius that you actually draped off land 
and then charge people for it and then tax people for land that is free for all of this land is your land. This land is my land. This land is made for you and me. This is free, free land that the native indigenous people understood. You can't stay in one place because you got to farm differently and you just move around. They didn't put any borders up because it just didn't make sense. And then here comes the borders and the it's crazy. We're in some insane times, man. And insane. it comes it comes from partly from capitalism uh, and partly from scarcity. Right. Like, you know, capitalism began in about the twelve hundreds in Europe with hoarding grain. Right. Um and that exploded into what we now know is capitalism. And I always, you know, think it's interesting when people say, you know, slavery existed everywhere. You know, we know that we're talking about this unique American race based um, intergenerational, unescapable t type of forced labor. Right. But I always wonder why no one ever asked, like, well, if slavery existed everywhere and um, like the white people did so much with it like why didn't it encapsulate africa like why didn't africa progress as much or if like for instance they were like coca leaves existed in south america why wasn't it until white people came over there and noticed it that it became an international drug right like fireworks existed in asia since the early aughts right why was it until white people say, hey, we could make some guns out of it, that fireworks exploded all across, I mean, that guns exploded all across the world, right? It is not that these things existed. It is the culture that perpetuates the idea that we can use an idea, we can own it, and then we can spread it across the world for our goal of dominating other people. And my question is always, you know, it's funny. I, I, I've been called a racist as you have, you've been called a racist and I find it interesting, you know, that this form of liberation is, is so threatening and so revolutionary that it, it makes people feel like we're being racist by pointing out racism. Cause that's all you're doing is pointing out racism. Doesn't it make you a racist, but it's, it's funny to me because my whole thing is everyone should be free. I want, I don't want to subjugate anybody. I don't want to rule over anybody. I don't want anybody to be under anybody's thumb and also off, often caution black people, even in their excitement around what happened in Alabama. Like that should, that's not the goal. I don't want to whoop anybody's ass. I don't want anybody to be in chains. I don't want anybody to work under me. Even the, the crew that I have, it's like, it's so collaborative. It's not even funny because I understand the power of collaboration. Like we need everybody to bring their, rice there, spice there, whatever, to the stew to make it delicious. I, I don't sit in deliciousness by myself. Unto myself, I'm tasty, but I'm not delicious at that level. It just get there's levels to this, right? Right. And that is where we go back to the beginning of the conversation is intention, right? Like the intention has never been to dominate or to own or be at the top of the food chain for some people, right? Like you think about Mississippi in 1868 when it was a majority black state and th those people were free and they control the political apparatus in the state. Same thing with South Carolina. They didn't punish the white people. They could have, they had the guns, they had the, the numbers, they had the constitution on their side and they didn't. Like in the rare few instances where you saw that people kind of had a glimpse of a, uh, equality or even the ability to turn the tables, no one ever did, right? And there is something about the lack of being raised up in a culture where you don't have to dominate or oppress others for your own well-being. Oh, I wanted to sit with that. Um, that's a lesson. 866-801-8255. That should be taught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I run my fingers through her hair. And she smiles and says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one